Hello and welcome back to Zonk TV. I'm Andrew Weir and this is part 2 of the rigging tutorial series. If you've missed part 1, then just click in the description below and there's a little link which will take you to a playlist of all the videos on rigging that I've made so far. If you're also not part of the uh, playlist, then you might want to click on it anyway and that'll take you through all the videos that you want to get to next. But otherwise, we'll get on with this video and I've quickly just put these two bones here. And uh, all that is, is two bones, one extruded from the tail, which we've seen in the previous video, and I've flipped it upside down. And then I've also named them two different names. This top one up here, as it was the first one I added, and it's the first one in the chain of bones, it's called Original. This second one down here is the second one in the chain, and it's called Copy. Uh, the reason I'm saying chain is you just need to understand it properly, is what I mean is if I keep on extruding, then the chain starts here and it ends here. As it goes down uh, in pose mode, it affects it just a little bit. So if I select the first one in the chain and I rotate it, the way it affects it is the whole structure moves as if it's one solid object. But if I select lower down in the chain and I rotate this one here, then the first one in the chain, or any above it in the chain, won't follow. So I go further down, any above it from the head won't follow, only ones after it in the chain rotate. And there are a few things that you can do to change this setting, as you might not want it to do that all the time. So that's where these relation settings come in under the single bone settings. Uh, that, that appears in both pose mode and edit mode, but as you click on different bones and you click on different uh, modes, you'll find that different ones are blanked out. So I'll quickly explain why they're blanked out and where. And we can see right now I'm selected on this copy bone, the second one in the chain, and the local location is blanked out but all the rest are clear. But if I go on the original bone, then all the rest are blanked out and only local location appears. Uh, I don't really know what loca local location is, so if you do happen to know, then post that in the comments, but it can't be important because I've made three rigs already uh, for human characters and I've never come across it. So um, it can't be that important, but I know that it can only be applied to the first bone. But the second bone in the chain, it's got all three of these options here, which is what I'm going to go through with you to start off with. And we're going to pose mode to come across this. And what I'm going to do is we've got inherit rotation checked at the moment. And basically, if I select the first one in the chain, and I rotate it, then the rest of the structure follows, as mentioned before. And the whole thing's rotating with it, as if it was one solid object, as previously mentioned. But that's not ideal all the time, so what you can do is you can uncheck inherit rotation for any bones that you don't want to follow. And it still moves the location, but you'll notice as I rotate it upwards, this second bone here hasn't moved its rotation at all. It's moved the location but not the rotation, uh, which I hope you understand, as it can be quite confusing. But that can be quite handy for certain things. Uh, an exact example I can't really give, but it, that can be really useful for maybe mechanical devices where you don't want one part in the structure to move while the rest of it you want it to move around it. But uh, let's move on to inherit scale, which works on the same basis as inherit rotation. If I'm in pose mode and I scale this first bone in the chain, then the rest of the bones in the chain will follow. But if I undo that and I uncheck inherit scale, same as in rotation one, I scale this up and now that it's unchecked, that bone down there isn't changing its size when I scale the rest. An exact use for that I can't even think of, and I can't even really think of using it in anything that I'm ever going to do. But there's got to be some kind of use for it, because I've added it in. And um, generally, in an animation, I'm not going to be scaling up my bones. So uh, I've never used it. So I can't really tell you like what's good about it and what you can use. So uh, you'll have to put a little imagination in there. But the next one, if I just recheck Inherit Scale, the next one is Connected. Now I have to be in Edit Mode to uh, do this, because if I go to pose mode, then e and it has to be on the lower down in the chain bone, because I go on the first bone, it's always blanked out, even in edit mode, but if I go on the second bone, then it's, it's, it's 
always blanked out apart from in edit mode. So right now uh, this is handy because if I want to move this bone that slow down the chain in edit mode or anywhere else then this other bone is going to follow. It's going to get bigger because it's following the movements and it has to be connected. But that's definitely not ideal for all the time. So you'd be tempted to just delete the parent and get rid of the connection altogether so that you can move it where you want, place it, and then you can also move this one here wherever you want and so on. But this isn't good because it's turned them into two completely separate bones so they're not even connected uh, as parents or anything. So the way this affects it is if I select the lower down of the chain, I've got what I want, I can move it wherever I like, but if I select the one above it in the chain that was originally above it in the chain and I move it, then it doesn't follow. Not, none of the other bones follow. And I rotate it and it doesn't even do anything with it as it did before. So the way to solve this, if I undo and reconnect them there, uh, so it's also reparented, and now again if I move it then it follows. And I uncheck connected. Then we can uh, we can move this around and we get this little black dotted line indicating that they're still parented to each other, but they're not directly connected. And this affects it because if I go into pose mode and I move this bone here now, we've got what we want, we can move this bone wherever we like, but if I select this bone here and I rotate it, then the whole structure moves. If I move it, the whole structure moves, and so on. But still remaining in being able to do whatever I like with this bone. Uh, so I hope you understand that. That is just a quick first point. And what I'm going to move on to now, I'm going to have to quickly set up a new scene. Okay, so I've set up a new scene here. And all it is is one bone upright, and there's one to the side. And the actual scene itself doesn't matter if you want to set it up. The only thing that matters is that you need to be in pose mode when you're doing this. Because otherwise the options won't appear on the right here. Right next to your bone settings, which we've been looking at this whole time, you'll find the bone and chain. And the bone and chain is the constraint settings. And to apply them, you first need to be selected on the bone that you want. So I'm going to select this bone that's on the side here. And I'm going to add a few random constraints so that we can see that the bone colour has changed to green showing that there is a constraint added and you can see that it's set out like the modifier settings on the uh, mesh settings so if you've seen mesh before where you're looking at the modifiers then this will all be very familiar to you but if you haven't then I'll just quickly explain it anyway and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply copy rotation what that does is give its own specific settings in a little box um, and then you mess around with these settings until you get what you want then you can apply more uh, to the same bone and it appears in a different list and the order that you apply them in will affect what happens and that's why when you press these little arrows here you can change their position in the order so I'm going to get rid of copy transform there and we're going to keep copy rotation for the purposes of this tutorial. And you'll see that the copy rotation words are in red, which means that right now at the moment, nothing's going to happen. Uh, you've applied it, but nothing's going to happen because it's not, it hasn't got a target to follow. So, when you're applying the target, you're first going to need to click on here, and you'll get a little drop-down list of your armatures. Um, at the moment, you'll probably only have one if you're copying, I've got two at the moment, so I'm going to select the one that I'm looking at, and that is 0, 02. And then we get a new option here, which is bone, and that's selecting a specific bone. I want to select 0, 05. And as soon as I've done this, we can see that the position of the bone has changed. So if I get rid of this bone, it's originally like that. I re add the target, and it's changed into that position there. Uh, what this means is it is copying it now, so I select this bone here and I rotate it, we can see that they both rotate, so it's working, it's copying the rotation. But what we can also do is select our coloured bone here to get the settings back up. We can also 
invert these angles. So if I invert them all, we can see that it's done the exact opposite. And if I rotate it now, it's moving in the opposite directions. Uh, although you can't notice that because it is upside down. And uh, I'm just going to uncheck these. And the second thing to notice is it's it's moved into the exact position that you want have put it in. But that might not always be what you want. You might want to keep its sideways position like that, but also copy the rotation. So, with the parent added, uh, or the target added, we can also change the world space to local space, which means in its own space, it, it will copy that rotation. So, I move it now, and it's following along as if it were already sideways, which is quite useful uh, for when you're rigging. I'm going to change it back to world space just for a second uh, to show you the next point, which is influence right at the bottom here. And this works on a kind of percentage, so imagine 1.00 as 100% and 0 as 0%. And as we change the percentage, it, you can see that it's changing. So 50% makes it at 45 degrees compared to its original, and 100% makes it 100% of the rotation. So if I take it to 0 and I rotate, nothing happens. But if I take it to 50, then it's going to be moving half as fast. So I rotate uh, 90 degrees on the y-axis, uh, minus 90 even, and you can see that it's only gone half the distance that this bone has. So um, quite useful uh, once you get into those settings. And I'm just going to quickly move on to another thing now. Uh, the next thing is copy location, which has the exact same layout. So I'm guessing you can already work it out from here, but just in case, uh, so we get more familiar with it. Select your target in the rig, select the bone you want to target, and you can see that it's moved right into the same position that the other one has. So, don't want it to move to the exact same position, we can change it to local space, and local space, make sure they're both local space. And then we can grab the bone here and move it and within its own local space, which means that when I'm moving it that way, that's correct, it is moving that way as well. And when I change the influence to 50, we can move it and it only moves half as fast. So, quite useful and obviously of course you can still invert this if you want to and change it to the head or tail. So um, if we want to be from the tail position or the head position, just proving it with the world space here, if I change it to world space and I change it to the tail, then it will move to the tail's position and we move it down to zero, it will be the head's position and anywhere in the middle will be its own percentage of that way, if that makes sense. So uh, the rest of these copy scale and limit distance and so on, work on pretty much the same settings. So let's go to limit rotation and we can limit the x-axis for this and this means that we set a certain degrees for it to follow. So the minimum could be zero and the maximum will make 90 in local space. And what this means is when I rotate it on the x-axis, we can only rotate it 90% of the way. And if we change the influence to zero, then uh, it will change the amount that we can rotate it by. So um, very similar settings. I'm sure with a little bit of messing around, you can work the rest of them out in the transform settings. But the next thing I want to move on to is inverse kin kinematics and that's shortened to IK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into object mode, delete this rig and move over to this rig here. Um, for this rig here, 
I want you to imagine that it's an arm, so that's the hand, uh, if I go into pose mode on it. This bone here is the hand, that's the first part of the arm, and that's the second. And uh, I think that's quite easy to see, if you imagine it as uh, the whole arm shape, and then this part will be up here will be the shoulder. And the way inverse kinematics works is it needs to be applied to, let's say, this bone here in the middle. And so when we apply that, it needs to be applied there and it affects the two bones around it as well as the one which uh, you have applied it to. So, what I want to do is go into edit mode and because when you apply inverse kinematics, it's, this is where it gets really confusing, uh, you do need a bone to target the movement. And I'll show you what I mean. What, what that means is if I extrude this on the x-axis, and then I make sure that it has no parent, so go into the relations and delete the parent altogether, and then move it on the x-axis just to prove it's away. So right now it isn't. That's because I wasn't selected on the right bone, sorry. So I want to select this bone here, and I delete the parent. So make sure that the parent definitely is deleted for this bone. And we want it to still be in this position here. What we're going to do is we want to go back into pose mode, select this one here, and select the target as your armature and bone 3, since that's the one that I applied. The colours change, showing that it's working now, and we can see that it's moved into the position of the head of this bone. And what I want to do is go back here, and we can see we've got a load of more selections of options here. And this is going to get quite confusing, so I do, I do say if you get confused, then just come back to it. Uh, after you've messed around with it for a little bit, and it, you might understand it a little bit better. And we want to change the chain length. And uh, I hope you follow me here when I say the chain length, when it's zero, it only applies to the, the first bone in the series, because that's the zero bone and that's the zero head. And then the second head is here, third there, and fourth is on the target bone. So, if we make the chain length to 2, which means that from this point here, it goes 2 along to, towards the first bone. In our case, it just happens to be the first bone, uh, which is 2 away. But we want it to go back to the shoulder point. And now, when we grab this point here in pose mode and move it, we can move the whole arm in a, a position like this. Now, I hope you can see how that kind of moves like an arm. So I move it outwards and I move it like that, and we can see that as I move it closer towards that bone there, the other one fits into the position fairly realistically. So the more I move it around, I move it straight out, and the arm goes straight back inwards, and it bends, and around here, and so on. And that's basically what inverse kinematics does. Uh, the name gets easier to say, and I kind of slipped up, but the um, the main thing to, if you want to get it to work, is to remember the chain length goes away from the bone which you're focused on, goes away from the tail, so 1 being there, and 2 being up here, which is the one we've set it to, and remember that this bone here has no parent. So remember those two things, and you should be able to do it fine. But um, for the more advanced settings in this area, I'm going to have to get around to it on the Human Rig series, which I'm going to get around to eventually. And I think that's all I want to mention about this. So if you get confused at any point, uh, don't be afraid to comment, and I will um, reply as soon as I get the message. And I'll try and help you out any way that I can. But otherwise... Uh, thank you for watching so far. Subscribe if you want to catch more Blender videos, and you can always suggest your own tutorial.
Uh, bye for now.